Battlefield 4 is a game that will go down in history as one of my all-time favourites. Even though it's nearly five years old, it's still a game that I regularly play and I'm not the only one. All the major Battlefield YouTubers go back and play BF4 with the idea to create content that is always well received by the audience. The game is a classic and has something for everyone. The question that this video attempts to address is just why Battlefield 4 is so good. The game had a terrible launch, but the team managed to rescue what could have been a massive failure and turn it into a brilliant experience all round. Let's take a deeper look into what made this game so special. I'm going to start off with the infantry. The infantry gameplay you can see in the background was provided by Hexa, a player that is held in high regards by the Battlefield community. He is someone that has eked every available bit of infantry gameplay from BF4 and certainly knows how to play. I'd recommend checking out his channel for more of the same. You can tell by his gameplay that Battlefield 4 had an engaging infantry experience that had a high skill ceiling. Microbursting or not, the best players win engagements in Battlefield 4, and on top of that, the gunplay is fun. Dice are really onto something with the class balancing in BF1, and the intended engagement ranges of weapons is something I want to see return in a future Battlefield title, but the feel of the weapons is just not on the same level as Battlefield 4. Battlefield 1 does have that unique experience with each individual weapon, and it's very rare to have a weapon that feels similar to another one, but I'm talking about the overall feel of weapons in the game. Battlefield 4 feels far better for me, and if they were to mix the two together, I think we'd get a really good experience. The only thing in Battlefield 1 that really stood out for me was the self-loading rifles and some of the snipers. Everything else felt like a hipfire, mag-dumping, spray-and-pray fest that didn't really engage me for more than a few hours. That being said, I think both games have their own take on gunplay, and if DICE could mix the two together, I think we could have something special. In addition to the gunplay, you have player movement. Battlefield 4 also did this better, and I think that the competitive scene was larger because of factors such as this. With Battlefield 1, you have a very simple movement system that was made slightly interesting with the slide mechanic. However, the lack of momentum really limits players from gaining an advantage over lower skilled enemies and therefore reduces the skill ceiling. I'm not going to get into the additional movement problems of BF1, as there are many and it's well documented. However, I would like to say this. If DICE want to produce a game that has the longevity and player commitment that BF4 has, they need to bring a movement system that challenges players and allows for a large skill gap between the worst and the best. This, in turn, will give the game a far better chance of making it competitively, which, as we can see with most large FPS games, brings additional popularity. Now, you might not notice with Battlefield 1 that the movement is quite poor, and to be honest, it's not really something that I give too much attention to, but the best players in the game all complain about it. The best players can really look at a player and work out if they're good by the way they move. They can work out if they're a very high skill player just by their movement. You don't even need to look at their aim, because usually if you've got that great movement, then the aim comes with it. Experience brings that aim and that movement together, and then you have a fantastic player. I don't think Battlefield 1 allows players to reach that potential, and in Battlefield 4 you definitely saw far more players looking for a competitive experience where they would go and play in 5v5 scrims and things like that. Even if it wasn't a massive eSport, there was definitely more of that going on, while in BF1 I've barely seen any of it. Incursions has come along and definitely changed a few things. Will they change much with the movement? I'm not too sure, but to be honest, I don't think much will change. I think with Battlefield 1, it's more to do with it being a console game, which definitely has a difference with the movement. You can make up your own opinion on that, but the reason BF4 was so popular is down to things such as the movement and the skill ceiling that came along with it. Moving on from infantry, we have vehicles. The skill ceiling in vehicles is again very high in Battlefield 4. How often have we seen vehicle competitions in BF1? Never. In Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4, you had tons of this stuff, and the fact that hardly any vehicle-focused players moved onto BF1 is testament to both the poor state of vehicle gameplay in BF1 and the amazing state of it in BF4. You have so much variety in Battlefield 4, whether you want to be a tanker, a lav player, whether you want to be in the air, in an attack helicopter or a scout, or whether you want to be in a jet. And then you have the attack jet and the stealth jets, both of which require huge amounts of time and experience in order to be very, very good. You could have the best two vehicle players in Battlefield 4 play against each other in attack helicopters or jets or something like that, and it would be incredibly interesting. There's so much to learn in that game, and it was even better, especially for tanks, in Battlefield 3. 
In Battlefield 1, there isn't a whole lot. You can see that most of the jet community from BF4 never went over to BF1 for any amount of time to play in the planes because there's just nothing to them. There's no real speed control, there's no way of doing special maneuvers in order to get past an enemy and get behind them and dogfight with them. And it's just a shame that that section of the community has been lost. Having it in Battlefield 4, and to be honest, players still playing in the vehicles in Battlefield 4 has given it that longevity, which again is a reason why Battlefield 4 still has a lot of players, even though it's nearly five years old. I think the modern setting certainly did help, and the next Battlefield probably going to be World War II, let's be honest, but it might be something more modern. I think we'll give DICE far more scope for creating a game that has competitive vehicle play, or at least a high skill ceiling with vehicle play, as there's more you can do with it. I think the movement of the tanks especially in Battlefield 1 limited them, as you just can't be very fast with the vehicles, which turns them into more of an Amtrak, and the Amtrak and BF4 is a bit of a waste of time anyway, so it's sort of like that. Something that Battlefield 4 did fairly well was customization. When I talk about customization, I'm talking about the difference that you can make to your weapon through the loadout section, whether it's skins or whether you're putting additional things on your weapon like a scope or a grip or a barrel attachment. These things made the game very, very interesting and people would often spend a lot of time looking at videos or maybe just in the loadout screen themselves, mixing up their weapon to maybe emulate something that they've seen in real life or maybe produce something that they think might work. There are several drawbacks to the customization that we saw in Battlefield 4. Let's take a look at BF1 and the way DICE limited players to certain variants of weapons. This made balancing the classes far easier and brought with it that interesting engagement range debate. Having a customization system like Battlefield 4 may be more interesting on the surface, however plays havoc with balance and will almost certainly lead to one or two weapons becoming king, hence the AEK meta that we saw in BF4. That is something I do not want to see in a future Battlefield game, I think all weapons should be used. However, introducing a customization system where you can change more than just bayonet on, bayonet off, a couple of different things with your scope, I think we really need to see that. And maybe having a system that was more like Battlefield 4, but incorporating some of the balancing that we saw in BF1 could be really awesome. Battlefield 4 certainly has more longevity when it comes to customization and messing with your loadout, which is really awesome. A big reason for Battlefield 4 being so popular, and this was touched on by Westy in a recent video, I suggest you go and check that out. I will link it down in the description below as well, because it was a very good video was the servers in Battlefield 4 and the way that communities could build their own server with their own settings and pretty much run it how they saw fit. Now, in some cases in Battlefield 4, this is a big problem. You get admins that ban you if you kill them and all sorts of stuff like that. And those people, well, they're not going to have much fun in future Battlefield titles because judging by what they've done with BF1, it won't be possible to have that much control as an admin. However, in terms of the game's longevity, Custom servers and communities had far more scope in Battlefield 4 than they do in BF1. Third party server support in BF4 was amazing. As I mentioned, you could create your own experience with large amounts of variety, and although the console options weren't as extensive as the PC ones, it was still better for communities overall. And we've seen quite a few communities die over the course of Battlefield 1's life, which is a shame because that was a major part of Battlefield, the community engagement between DICE, between the game, and between those people that just wanted to have fun on a game. Now the purpose of this video was to take a look at why Battlefield 4 is so good, and I think I've done that by looking at the infantry, the vehicle gameplay, and certain things such as customization and the servers. Let me know in the comments if I've missed anything. There are some things that Battlefield 4 really did well that I probably haven't included, and I could go on forever with BF4 because it's a game I love so much. Maybe we'll see it with good player numbers for a few more years to come. I certainly think we will. And if the next Battlefield game isn't a hit, then Battlefield 4 may become the biggest Battlefield game as we saw with Hardline. And to be honest, I think the player numbers will overtake BF1 within the next year or so. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll catch you in the next video.